All right, welcome back to The Effect. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about in this video is the secret shame of econometrics, or at least the most recent secret shame of econometrics, and that is staggered treatments or rollout designs in difference in differences. Uh, so what a staggered treatment or a rollout design is, is when you have a difference in difference type setup, where a treatment goes into effect at a particular time, you have a group that is treated and becomes treated at a particular time, and you also have groups that are not treated. Uh, and so, you know, maybe uh, teacher training program reform goes into effect in 2012, for one school and not for another school. And so we can compare how those two different schools evolved over time to see if the treatment had any sort of effect. But what if we have multiple different groups all getting treated? Let's say that we have three different school districts here. Uh, this one got the new teacher training program in 2012. This other one got it in 2013. And then this one never got it at all. That is a staggered treatment because the treatment was applied in a staggered fashion to different places at different times. Or you could say that it was rolled out in different places at different times, a rollout design. Now, for a long time, researchers thought that you could just treat this as normal and just use two-way fixed effects, as we've done in some videos in the past, to estimate the effect of treatment in these cases, which makes sense, right? We're still using the group fixed effects for account for any baseline differences. We're still using the time fixed effects to account for the shared changes over time. Seems like the coefficient on the treated variable should be getting us out the effect, but in fact, it does not. There's a couple of reasons why this is largely having to do with heterogeneous and changing effects. Yeah, if you looked in the last video at dynamic difference in differences, remember how I said that sometimes the effect of a policy might not be the same all the time, right? Maybe it takes a while to really do anything. Uh, maybe it goes into effect right away and then fades out. You might expect that the effect of treatment would be different at different time periods in the future after the treatment goes into effect. Now this is a problem. Here's why it's a problem. In two-way fixed effects, what it's doing is it's getting rid of that within variation. That's what the group fixed effect does. And so it's trying to then compare the within variation uh, between places where the policy went into effect and places where we didn't see any change at all. Except there's two different ways that you can not see any change in your treatment level. One could be if you weren't treated before and you continue to not be treated, but the other is if you were already treated before and you continue to be treated. Which means that when we do two-way fixed effects, we aren't just using the control group as a control group. We are also using anybody who has already been treated. We can use them as a control group as well. Now, this might not necessarily be a problem, right? I mean, parallel trends could still hold in this way, right? If the effect goes into place and you say, hey, this group already got treated and they got a jump in their, in their outcomes, uh, but then after that jump, we still expect the trends to be the same, then that would be okay. But if you have treatment effects that evolve over time, that's never going to be true, right? Let's say this school got this this, uh, this teacher training program in 2012. This one got it in 2013. And let's say that this teacher training program doesn't do anything right away. It takes a while to sort of start doing its thing, right? So you're the 2013 school. I'm going to compare you to the control group, which includes both the actual control group and the one that already got treated before. Uh-oh. So what's going to happen? If that treatment takes a while to go into effect, then right away, we're not going to see anything, right? But in the year afterwards, as that effect starts to go into play, what's going to happen? Well, for this treated group that already got treated before, they're going to start deviating from trend, which means that whatever parallel trend I think might have held, it shouldn't hold, right? Parallel trends is going to be violated because of the fact that these different treatments go in, get more or less effective over time, uh, which in itself will drive a violation of parallel trends. And so everything falls apart. Now, this is really just a problem with two-way fixed effects. It's not a problem conceptually with difference and difference. Difference and difference doesn't mind uh, that we have all these different control groups and, and you know, some of them become treated later and some of them become treated earlier, right? Difference and difference doesn't care. It's just the fact that two-way fixed effects forces these treated groups that are already treated to act as though they're control groups when in fact they're not. So we can fix this. We can still use difference and difference when we have a staggered treatment or rollout. We just need to use a different estimation method. Now, as I record this, we have a bunch of different estimators that have been proposed to solve this problem. It's sort of a fertile area of research right now. Uh, who knows what people will settle on as being sort of the standard solution if there is a standard solution in the future. But they all sort of share the same basic idea. And the basic idea is this. Well, the problem that we have is that we're using the wrong control group and we are not allowing for the effect to be changing over time. So let's just do that. So all these different methods have the same general idea. We're going to allow the effect to be different for each different group, depending on if so we're going to have one effect for people who were uh, starting to be treated in 2012, a different effect for people who started to be treated in 2013. So there's, there's different uh, cohort effects. When you started to be treated, you get your own sort of treatment effect. 
We're also going to allow the treatment effect to be different in different time periods. Uh, so the 2012 group, they're going to have one effect in 2013, one effect in 2014, one effect in 2015, and so on. The 2013 group is going to have a different effect in 2013 and 2014 and 2015. Once we have all these different individual effects that are different over group and different over time, then we can then combine them back into a single effect to get a single effective treatment if we want. Uh, we can average everything together to get an average effect for everybody. Uh, we can see, average together all of the different po uh, years afterwards, say what's the effect in general one year after you're treated, whenever that happens to be, two years after you're treated, whenever that happens to be, and so on. So the general idea is this, estimate a bunch of different effects, and then aggregate them together afterwards. As I mentioned, there are a few different uh, approaches to doing this. I'll talk about two of them very briefly. Uh, the first one is the Callaway and Santa Ana Estimator. What this does is it, first of all, uses matching in each period. It says, okay, 2012, I'm gonna, fit, I'm gonna pick for you who the best control group is. And I'm gonna say, well, first of all, obviously I'm only gonna use people who were not actually treated at the time. So people who are already treated, you don't get to be picked as a control group. Then I'm gonna use maybe some sort of matching variables or some other process to pick the control group that is comparable to you and is eligible to actually be controlled at that time. So I've picked a different control group for each time period based on who is still available to be a control group. And I can choose whether I want to include people who will eventually be treated or not as controls. It's up to you. So I can use matching to pick the best control group, perhaps using some sort of uh, control matching variables to pick very comparable groups in each period. Once I do that, I can then well, sort of proceed as normal, right? Estimate different effects for each group comparing to their own personal control group in each period of time in the future. Uh, often they'll use an inverse probability weighting approach, just like we did in the matching chapter. And then you have individual treatment effects. You have a different effect for each group uh, cohort. Uh, so the people who started to get treated in 2012, they have an effect in 2013 and 2014 and 2015 and 2016 and so on. People who started to get treated in 2013, they also have one in 2013 and 2014, and we can aggregate as we like. That's one approach, the Callaway and Santa Ana method. You can read more about it in the chapter. The other way that I'll approach, I actually only hinted at in the chapter, uh, but has gotten more popular since I wrote the book, and that is the Woldridge Mundlach approach. So this is by Jeffrey Woldridge, and he uses a Mundlach estimator, which is sort of like an estimator that we talked about back in the fixed effects chapter, specifically in the random effects video. Uh, this is an estimator where you sort of take the within variation, you have a set of group fixed effects for within variation, but you also control for the between variation, sort of have these two different sources of variation in there at the same time. And then on top of that, you have a whole bunch of interaction terms allowing there to be different difference and difference effects in each time period for each group. Very similar to the dynamic difference and difference model that we talked about last time. Very, very similar to it, but only with a few slight adjustments. The basic real idea that we're getting in there is that instead of just taking the treated group variable and interacting it with the time period, which is what we did in dynamic difference and differences, we also have an interaction with which treated group you are in. Uh, and so there's, it's not just, are you in a treated group or not? It's which treated group are you in? Are you in, the, you in the group that started to get treated in 2012? Or are you in the group that started to get treated in 2013? So you had an additional set of interaction terms in there, just interaction terms falling from the sky. And then you estimate all these interaction terms, just like we did with difference, the dynamic difference and difference model. And then you aggregate them together as you like. So I'm not going to go into the technical details of these estimators, um, but I, they sort of all work in the same way. You estimate a bunch of different treatment effects uh, using interaction terms or just in estimating things separately in separate estimations as you do in the Callaway and Santa Ana method. And then you aggregate them together as you like to get the kind of treatment effect that you're interested in. The key here though, is that you do have to use one of these methods. If you are going to look at a situation in which the treatment was applied to different groups at different times, you simply cannot just use the two way fixed effects approach. It can bias you quite terribly. You don't wanna do it. Instead, you wanna use a method that allows for all this variation to occur. And then you can, you know, tamp back things back down to get the single estimate you want after the fact. All right, that's it for difference and differences. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>